Our Come the Bagnall Harvey Cumming was named in honour of the brave United Irishman leader and our symbol, the Tree of Liberty, is that of the United Irishman. After the defeat in 1798, Harvey took refuge in the caves on the west side of the Great Salt Sea. From here he hoped to escape to Republican France. Outside these same caves, the fishermen of Kilmore now struggle to eat a meagre living, while large supermarket chains charge top prices for their fish and their crabs. The boats spent longer and longer tied up due to a plethora of regulations while unable in many cases to make a living, they've no recourse to social welfare. I have taught in my 25 years in Bridgetown Vocational School the sons and daughters of these men and women. They are the bravest of the brave, the unsung heroes of the RNLI, a gallant tradition handed down from the Iron Men such as the Wickhams and the Douglas of Ross Lair and is well and truly alive in the Deverixes and the Cahos and the Cavnas, to name just a few of today. These people and their livelihood must be to the fore in all political planning. They're not merely quaint relics of the past in Leo Bradford's Ireland. I grew up on a small farm where a family could expect to make a living. This has changed most profoundly. Of the 4,000 family farms in County Wexford today, it's estimated that only 1,400 of them are independently economically sustainable. The others having incomes of less than 24,000 per year, 10,000 less than the average industrial wage. Imagine what the ability to sell excess clean energy back to the grid could do for these farms, the local economy and our environment. James Connolly said, the ruling by fooling is a great British art with great Irish fools to practice it. Sadly, I believe as a nation we continue to be fooled. Irish farms are well placed to produce small-scale small wind energy, small-scale solar energy and biodigestion. This could add as much as 10,000 to their annual income. Yet Ireland is the last country in Europe to provide a feed-in tariff to allow this to be done. This must change immediately. Last week I visited a young family in Our Lady's Island. The father, a past pupil of mine, is now legally blind. They have two children, one of which has a diagnosis of autism. They pooled their limited resources and built a small sensory garden for the child in the front lawn. A manhole beside the front door has spilled sewage down the garden and onto the street five times in the last year. The council have looked at it, but as of now, have done nothing to repair it. I am of the opinion that many aspects of local government, education and the medical system, need to be examined without delay. There's a growing need for transparency instead of box ticking and moving the responsibility around, around the house until people become tired of asking for their rights. The people of Ireland are crying out for change. People can see through the spin. A few days ago I visited a family in Clongeen. Three generations lived in the one house while the house next door sat idle. We are citizens of a republic and we demand higher standards. Lee Mello said, Lee Mello said, the republic stands for truth and honour. For all that is noblest in our race, can we really still claim this as we look in horror at what the pillar banks have done and continue to do to this country? The other day I spoke to a man in a small rural housing estate. He paid 220000 for a family home. He told me the one beside him was now worth sixty. Two in the estate lay empty. I've spoken to mothers who have children on waiting lists with up to 1,000 ahead of them. See students leaving third level to be met with rents that cannot be reached upon. Last week a student canvassing with me told me how he had overcome various challenges to attain an excellent leaving cert. However, his dreams of university were smashed as he realised he could never reach on the Dublin rent. There are whole swathes of kids like this who cannot afford our free education. Our young people are forced to pay outlandish car insurance, often multiples of the car itself. I want to know how these figures are arrived at, as I do with our pharmaceutical companies. 
We need a new voice in politics, a voice to challenge the status quo, and one that will not be brushed aside. I believe A2 is the voice. The United Irish Men, the Fenians, the IRB and the IRA all went to their maker with a dream, a vision, a republic where the people had rights. I ask you, what did we do with that dream? Was it for this that Connolly could not rise to the firing squad in the Stonebreaker's yard? Bagnell Harvey was hung on Mikesford Bridge on the 28th of June 1798. His body was later beheaded in the trunk thrown into the River Slaney while his head was displayed on the spike in Wexford Courthouse. Last night, myself and Wally got under Wexford Bridge to see the bundle of wet sleeping bags which is home now to so many of Wexford's homeless. 120 people, I am told, seek shelter in any quiet corner they can find in Wexford. They are our citizens. They are our people. We need change. Thank you. Thank you.